Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Saint or Freedom. Here's your host, Kip Tidewater. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sink or Swim. The object of the game is simple. If it's soluble in water, it sinks, but if not, it swims. Please welcome our two contestants. Coming to the stage first, Miss Alice Barnacles. And now coming to the stage, give it up for Mr. Patrick Washington. What's up, what's up, guys? Welcome to Sink or Swim, where if it's soluble in water, it sinks, but if not, it swims. Tell us a little bit about yourself, guys. Uh, hi, Kit. My name is Alice uh, Barnacles, and I'm really happy to be here. My hobbies are sewing, basket weaving, and um, I also like to make hot foot sundaes. Yo, what's up, Kip? Uh, you know, I'm Pat. I'm from... Uh... Monroeville, Alabama, you know, and uh, I'm just happy to be here, man, you know what I'm saying, I don't have a whole lot of hobbies, I just chill, you know, chill out by the lake, I fish, and um, I like eating cracklings with hot sauce, you know what I'm saying? Okay, Allison Pat, I'm going to show you a molecule, your job is to tell me whether or not, help us out, audience, what are they supposed to say? <laughs> That's right. Your job is to tell me whether it sinks or swims. And it's real simple. This is the rule. For every five carbons, there must be one hydrogen bonding atom. If you can figure that out, you may take home the prize money. First question goes to you, Alice. Does this molecule sink or swim? Well, Kip, uh, let me see. Can you help me, um... Count those carbons? Uh, I see. Um, I'm going to say it sinks, Kip. I'm going to say it sinks. That's right, Alice. Next question is for you, Michael. Does this molecule sink or does it swim? Let me see about that, Kip. Can you help me count those carbons, man? Oh, yeah. I see that NH2 group, that thing can hydrogen bond with water, it should definitely sink, man. It should sink. No problem. I'm sorry, Michael, but that's not right. There are too many carbons and not enough hydrogen bonding atoms. We'll go back to you, Michael. Does this molecule sink or does it swim? Hey, baby boy, help me out. Um, let's count those carbons, man. I might be able to learn from my mistakes. Let's see. I count ten carbons and two hydrogen bonding atoms. Man, I'm going to say this thing sinks like a rock in the middle of Lake Tuskegee. That's right, Michael. And with that answer, you've tied the score. It's now one to one. Next question is for Alice. Alice, tell me if this monster of a molecule sinks or swims. Uh, Kip, I count um, 16 carbons. Let's see, if I can do my math correctly, 16 carbons and 3 hydrogen bonding atoms. Oh my gosh, I'm having a meltdown. Oh my gosh. Uh, I I'm going to say it uh, sinks. I'm going to say it sinks. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You have any tissue? I think I need a volume. I'm sorry, Alice, but that's just not correct. If it was one less carbon, then it would definitely sink because the ratio would be 15 carbons and 3 hydrogen bonding atoms, which is the same as 5 to 1. But there's 16 carbons and not enough hydrogen bonding atoms to make this sucker sink. So, it swims. The score is still tied at 1 to 1. And now, we need a tiebreaker question. So we're going to flip a coin and see who's going to answer this question. Alice, you call the toss. 
I choose heads. Well, Alice, since you won the coin toss, tell us, will this molecule sink or will it swim? Sink or swim? Nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Those are my oxygen bonding atoms, so I don't see one of those. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I count six carbons, so even if there was one of those atoms, it still wouldn't sink because it has too many carbons. So I'm going to say this one swims. The score is two to one. Alice got the last question right. So guess what, Alice? You're the winner!